And instead of just choosing every tool you can find out there that sounds interesting, really be intentional about only picking the ones that are really high value to everybody on the project. Have you ever felt completely overwhelmed by the number of tools and technologies you have to use on your software project? Well, you're not alone. It's one of the top issues that all software developers have in 2023. Well, today, let me help you out a little bit by sharing some of the things that I've learned about how to simplify your tech stack and make decisions based on what's going to be most productive and efficient for everybody on your team. First, I'm gonna talk about why having a complex tech stack and tools that you use is such a big problem and what actually happens when this is on your software project. And then at the end of the video, I wanna talk about some of the things that'll really help you simplify the decisions you make and just make it easier to write code. So why is having a really complex stack such a big problem? Well, the first reason is just tool overload. When you've got a lot of different software tools, frameworks, libraries that you have to use, it can actually cut down quite a bit on the ability for people to just get stuff done. You know, on most software projects, it's about productivity. We like to be creative. We like to work with new tools and technologies. But at the end of the day, what's important is to finish the work that we're assigned on a project and just get it done. The second big problem with a complex tool stack or too many technologies and frameworks you're using is decision fatigue. Having to make decisions about, should we use this library or that library? Should we use this tool or that tool? You add that all up across your entire software project and a lot of time and effort can get wasted. Another big reason to simplify your tech stack is some of the integration challenges you might run into. You know that every time you pick a new library or tool, you not only have to consider whether it's the right tool or library for the requirements of the project or what you want to do. You also have to consider how long is it going to take to set up for every new team member that joins? How hard is it going to be to configure? And how much new information is going to be needed to maintain it as you use it over the lifetime of the project? Project. There's also big implications on cost or the finances for your project, depending on how many tools and technologies you use. Many new tools these days, especially plugins for your IDE that use AI or more advanced features that aren't just built in, have subscription costs. So one of the biggest things to consider if you want to really simplify your work and have a tech stack that supports getting the work done but doesn't overwhelm people is how much money are you going to have to invest not just on maybe purchasing or licensing that tool or technology but the money that's spent for the salaries of all the developers and everybody else who has to now be trained on and support and understand that tool biggest reason to consider simplifying your tech stack is diluted focus. When people are spending more of their time on troubleshooting tools, trying to look up obscure errors, upgrading packages, it takes the focus off just getting work done. So how can you simplify your tech stack? How can you make it much easier for people to just get work done, but still have the right set of tools? Well, the first thing to consider is that you really be intentional about evaluating and prioritizing every technology investment or tool investment that you make. When you have a big list of options to decide on, you know, back pre-Agile, we often had a design phase on waterfall projects, and we would look at all the available tools and technologies, and an architect or a group of architects would decide what's going to be used on the project. Now, of course, things could evolve over time, but there was some intentional thought put into it. These days, on a lot of you know Agile projects, whether it's Scrum or Kanban or some variant, often people are under pressure on a 
team or on a project to just get started immediately. And so a lot of decisions about what technology will be used, what frameworks, what packages, what you know, cloud platform services are going to be used are made sort of just in time on the project. And I don't think that's going to go away anytime soon, but it can be a really good idea to look at, OK, when we're selecting all these different tools or technologies we're considering using, which of them bring the highest value to the team? If something's really high value and it doesn't take too much to configure, it's free, it's fairly straightforward, that's a no brainer. You probably want to use it. If something provides some esoteric little benefit that's kind of cool and neat to use, but it actually requires a lot of setup and a lot of people to understand stuff, you might want to put it lower down on the list of priorities. And instead of just choosing every tool you can find out there that sounds interesting, really be intentional about only picking the ones that are really high value to everybody on the project. Hey, are you getting to that point in your career where you're starting to wonder, did I choose the right job? Should I be doing something maybe a little bit different? Maybe you're considering becoming an entrepreneur or getting into consulting or just shifting into like a leadership role or maybe working in slightly different technology. Well, I've collected a lot of really great information about the top 25 job roles that most people work in tech and I've got access for you for free via a link in the description. It's called Tech Rollpedia and it's basically a curated set of information that I've gathered to try to help you figure out if you're still in the right job role or maybe you need to make a little bit of a change. I've collected information like how much you make in areas across the world, what's the typical career progression like, what kind of education or training might you need, and I've also got links to books, resources, and key people that already have that job that you could learn from. So if you want, click the link in the description and check it out. The second thing you can do that'll really help you simplify your tech stack is to try to pick things that are really versatile. Try to pick one tool or one technology that does a lot of different things. You know, Ruby on Rails, for example, is not as popular these days, but at the time it came out, comparatively, what else was on the market? It was a kind of one size fits all type of framework for web development. Now, obviously, this was way before the explosion of, you know, single page application frameworks that we often use today and things like that. But whether you're looking at a tool for your IDE, a library, a third party integration, an API of some sort, or just your programming language, the more it can do out of the box, the less having to go out and find, you know, unique boutique little packages on GitHub or NPM, or if you're using Python, you know, wherever your package manager is, the less wasting of time you'll do trying to find kind of that perfect combination, that unique, you know, Franken stack, as they say, that's needed for your project. Also, if you choose various tools and technologies, you have to at some point try to standardize on them and document that you're even using them in the first place. I've been on projects over my career where I've served as an enterprise architect, as a consultant, kind of helped companies that have multiple projects. And when you make a technology decision there, it's not just impacting one software development team. It's actually something that you want to get used, hopefully, if it makes sense, across multiple teams. Well, for every new tool or technology you have to pick, you have to now communicate that decision to everybody who's going to use it. You have to figure out how to help them get started. You have to have a policy, for example, on how often they have to update it. And so, you know, deciding how you want to standardize on a set of tools and how you want to document it and communicate it should be one of the main things that you consider if you want to just simplify your tech stack and get more work done. You should also really strongly consider looking out on the internet and in various communities where developers congregate and seeing what they're using and getting their input. Some of the most difficult projects I've worked on over my career were when a lone developer or some architect with a big idea, you know, went out and found some esoteric package or tool, and it was not really used by anybody else online. There was a very small or even non-existent community of other developers that used it. So you can find the you know coolest library or framework or package out there 
there. But if there's no community around it, now I'm not saying there aren't reasons to do that sometimes. I certainly have picked, you know, libraries or packages where there's not a big community if the value is really high. But consider seeing how many other people are online and available that can actually help support you, you know, answer questions about it troubleshoot it that'll make it a lot more likely that if you choose to roll it out on a single project or on multiple projects you yourself are not now alone in helping your team support it and use it properly and the last thing that'll really help you simplify your tech stack or just you know make sure that you're using it to its fullest potential is to have a regular period that you review all the packages and tools and frameworks you're depending on and update them. You know, I've been on projects that last a year, two years, where let's say a set of, you know, packages using your package manager were set up at one point and nobody went in and made sure they were sort of updating them and bringing in the latest releases on somewhat of a regular basis. And towards the end of the project, somebody tried to do it and there was so much drift between the time that those packages were originally selected and the time that some of the latest features were about to go in front of customers customers in production, that it was just too big of an effort and management wouldn't approve doing it because it was actually going to take a lot of time to do that. So, you know, if, if you're going to choose to use a tool, a, a technology, a package, a cloud service, you know, anything like that, I think it's really smart if you put a reminder on your calendar or a reminder on your team's calendar to kind of go in and attempt updating things at a regular interval. So have you tried simplifying your tech stack? Is this something you're facing a lot of issues with? Leave me some comments about things that you've done to try to simplify it. And if you're facing problems with your tech stack, you know, what are some of the stories you might have about having to combine things together and where things have went wrong? Until next time, thanks.